Now, wait a minute. Did you actually fill in your form? I know it seems kind of weird to do this when you're all by yourself. You could just plow right through this video, but I really want you to practice doing this. You're gonna have to be able to do this on your own when you move into your next course in literacy, 3640. So practice it now. Okay, yeah. I had five for five for feature A, which is initial and final consonants. I've got four out of five for initial blends and digraphs, four out of five for short vowels, three out of five for affricates, and four out of five for final consonants, I'm sorry, consonant blends and digraphs. All right, now the last piece, and this is the most important piece because what we're gonna get here is a little laundry list of features we need to teach. So what you're gonna do is for any feature that the child does not have a perfect score, so they have perfect score on these initial and final consonants, but we're missing one on these initial blends and digraphs. So what you're gonna do is look for the B that you did not circle. The B we did not circle is up here for ship. And so what we're gonna do here is write the one they need to learn. They need to learn SH, and I'm gonna put a dash here because it's the SH at the beginning of the word. Let's do it again for number C. Which of these words did the child not get credit for that short vowel? Right here, we have it right there. So I'm gonna put short E. Another right way to write a short E is to put an E and then like a little loop above there. So he needs to learn short E. Then we're gonna look for the D's and the E's. I want you to stop the video and go and search for the ones that the child doesn't know and list them right here. Then come back to the video. So here we are. He needs to learn SH at the beginning of words, short vowel E, the digraphs DR and TR, and SH at the end of words. Now we can look at this list and determine which one would we start with. What do you think? Which one of these targets should we start with? I'm thinking either SH in the beginning or short vowel E. Now the reason I'd pick SH in the beginning is he needs it in the beginning and the end, but it's easier to hear it in the beginning position than the end. So I might teach SH at the beginning of words and then the short E is also something that he kind of half knows. He had put the E in here, but when he hung that E on the end of the word, the so-called silent E, it changed the sound of that vowel. So that might be one <clears throat> that would be rather easy to teach since he knows something about short E's. We do see the short E in other words here too. Um, so what's nice about the DSA is instead of looking at a general child's writing sample and analyzing all the errors in that writing sample and then trying to determine which would be the easiest to teach that student, like we were doing at the beginning here. We have a targeted writing sample that helps us see specific kinds of features that the child is probably just about to learn. And then from that list, we can determine the pieces that we know they need to learn next put them in order and start teaching those. I've also added here a little note that he needs to work on the formation of capital G, lowercase g, B in the capital form, and C. Oh, actually, and in the lowercase form too there, huh? So I will add that. This is the analysis. And you should write it out just like this. You'll put the semi-total score here and then write specifically which features the child does not yet know. SH was missing, right there it was, he didn't have the SH. So this would teach us, or show us, what we need to teach the student. Now you could, hopefully, now do this on your own. Your next step is you're gonna take the Ruby sample and you are going to follow the steps that we just went through. If you can't remember those steps, remember you just printed off page 51 and 52 from Gansk chapter two. 
And you could use that to walk through how to um, assess this document. Or you could just pull the video playhead back to where we were walking through the Jake example and work through each step as we worked through the Jake example. When you're finished, you're going to have, um, you want to write right up here, write what the stage score is, so the number of words that she spelled correctly. <clears throat> and then down here, you're going to make one of those boxes like we did for Jake. And you're going to determine which features the child knows and write specifically which ones are on our list to teach. All right. Um, this, you will either, um, you could scan it and send it to me that way, or you could pho just photograph your work, make sure the photograph, I can actually see what you wrote on there, and you'll email that to me along with your screencast A empty outline. So you have two things this week that you're sending me. Now, if you did this test to a class, which teachers sometimes give this test, um, sort of group administer it. It's, it. It works like a spelling test, so it would be an easy one to do for a group of students. And then you could record, so here's a classroom example, here's all the kids' names, and here's the different features that they know. Now, the teachers uh, indicating here that William, Natalie, Drew, these kids knew all of the features. So she didn't write fives all the way across here. She just kind of saved some time and put 25 in there. And I think I would have, for these kids who are lower than 25, I would have wanted to know which of these features they didn't know. But she didn't. She just kind of put the, the um, stage score there. And following the protocol, if the child is scoring above 21, she did go up to the next harder test. So we can see that we've got some kids here, like Nathan, Taylor, and Dana, who are really working on letter name stage features, whereas another whole group of kids are in within word stage features. And then there's also some kids who are working on syllable juncture work. So this is what a class-wide analysis would look like. When you write your five lesson plan progression, you will be choosing to work with a group on one of the designated features up here at the top. So you might decide, you know what, I'm gonna to work to teach abstract vowels. And just generally previewing this, we're gonna talk about it a lot more in another week, but you would look at, well, who needs to learn abstract vowels? Certainly it's not Nathan, Taylor, or Dana, right? They're not ready for this work. They have things down here they need to learn. But you could look at these scores here and say, well, which of these kids need the abstract vowels. Which ones would I put in my group? Uh, unfortunately, with this data display, we don't see which abstract vowels the child needs to learn. So you're going to be um, able to select the abstract vowel that you would like to teach in this area. Certainly, if you actually gave this test to your class, you would know which specific features the child needed to learn and you could play in the instruction that way. But for our five lesson plan progression, you'll just be picking one of these targets, and then within that feature, abstract vowel, you will decide which abstract vowel you want to teach. Give you a little bit of leeway here. All right, that concludes our demonstration of the developmental spelling assessment. Again, your application activity here, my little formative assessment, is you're gonna complete the analysis for Ruby give me a stage score, also provide all of the analysis, just like we did for Jake, right there. All right, looking forward to seeing your thinking.